Hey guys, this video is going to be about comparing CSV files. So I'm going to explore my eBay item database and also my SkuGrid item database. For those of you who don't know what SkuGrid is, SkuGrid is a program that allows you to track your source so you can see if it's out of stock or if the price has changed. And then it will go into your eBay listing and update it to reflect the change in the stock. So it helps prevent a lot of issues. Doesn't get rid of all of them, but it's kind of critical for at least a bulk business and most dropshipping businesses need some kind of inventory management, but not always. But with bulk, you definitely do, because otherwise you get tons <laughs> and tons of issues. So let's get to it. I'm first gonna show you the files. I can explain how to get the files in a bit, but I usually use Google Sheets, um, because I really believe that I should use open source software so that you guys can do everything that I'm doing. Um, but in this scenario, the files are too big to work properly in Google Sheets, so I have to use Excel. Um, but that's okay. The first thing to note when you're working with either your SkuGrid database or your eBay database on Excel is that you need to change the format of the item ID. If we look at this file here, we can see if we look at the item ID column, it's in scientific notation. That's gonna cause some problems. So straight off the bat, I know everything else is confusing. There's a lot of information here, but we're just gonna change this column and we're gonna click on number and then take the decimal down to zero. And now you can see these are now proper item IDs, okay? So moving forward, I guess I should just start we're gonna look at this file. I'm not gonna start working with it or doing too much with it. Basic premise, anytime you open an Excel spreadsheet, the first thing you should do is look at the headers of the columns because that's gonna be what gives you a sense of what kind of information is contained in the spreadsheet. Spreadsheets can be really overwhelming, especially a spreadsheet like this. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of this file, there's 80,000 items in this list, right? And this is actually the smaller list. This is the list of every item that I have for sale on my eBay account. And then if we go to the other file here, we can see the list of every item that SkuGrid is looking at. So SkuGrid is looking at 134,000 items. So that means that I'm paying SkuGrid to look at 54,000 items that aren't for sale on my eBay account. That doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> And the reason that that's happening is because I've deleted tons and tons of items once I transitioned into my new pricing format, and I didn't delete them from SkuGrid. Because if you manually delete them, psh, that's basically impossible at this point. I have to do this compare in order to delete my listings so that I'm not paying too much. And the basic premise of the compare is we're gonna take this big list, right? It's got 150,000 or 134,000 items on it. And we need to determine, okay, of those 134 items, which are no longer for sale on eBay. And then we need to eliminate those and then re-upload everything to SkuGrid. So we're gonna wipe our SkuGrid database and then add the modified list to it. And the modified list will only have about 80,000 items in it instead of 134,000. So this means that I'm gonna almost half the amount of credits that SkuGrid is using. In reality, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm using like 30, 40% uh, that I don't need to be. And at this point I'm paying like 230, 240 bucks a month. So I could be getting by paying less than that. So. Let's explore the files a little bit more. We're gonna look at the SkuGrid database. And now I get that there's a lot of information here and it's confusing, but really there's only one column we actually care about. Nothing else in here, well, okay, there's, there's two columns that we care about, um, but one of them we only care about just for a kind of a fail safe, okay? If you can he see here this reprice Sku category here, or this column, this is each individual eBay item ID. So this is how we compare the two lists, because this file has the item ID, and then if we look at the other file, the eBay item database, it also has the eBay item ID. So we can look through each database and look 
because if if the number shows up on the SKU grid database and the eBay database, we know that it's good. But if the number only shows up on the SKU grid database, then we know that we can safely delete the item, right? So the trick here, normally when you do this, you're working with a file that's less than like 10, 20,000 items. You can do it all at once. Unfortunately, I have to separate the file into different components because you can only upload 10,000 items to ScrewGrid at a time. You can try to do more, but there is a hard cap, and if you get anywhere near the hard cap, it starts to respond very slowly. So it's best to separate everything into small chunks. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this file here, which is, you know, 140, 134,000 items, and I'm splitting this file into 13 different files, each with about 10,000 items. And then at that point, I'm gonna do the compare and eliminate all the unnecessary items. And then I'm gonna re-upload them back to SkuGrid. I'm not gonna show you this entire process because it's pretty tedious, but it's something that's really useful because it saves you tons of time. Like even, even with that I've been putting this off and that I've stressed out about it, it really only will take me like less than four hours. And that's less than four hours to make, to modify the inventory that SkuGrid has by like 50,000 items, which really isn't that much time because I only have to do this every now and then, every couple of months really. It's based on when you post things and if you've been deleting things a lot. So we're gonna start and what I need is I've, I, I do the compare itself in Google Sheets, but I use Excel to look at the whole sheet at once. In Google Sheets, I need to make small versions of it. So that's what I'm doing right now. Here you can see that I have a bunch of tabs open and they're Google Sheet tabs. And they have titled part one up until part 13. And you can see that the top line is the same line as in the SkuGrid database file, right? And the reason that is, is because this needs to be in this format in order to upload to SkuGrid properly. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna compare all these and then upload each completed list to ScrewGrid one at a time, okay? So to start off, we're gonna select line two, and now we need to find line 10,000. So we're gonna scroll down until we get close. There we go. And if any of you know a way to jump to a line number, and you could tell me in the comments, that would be super fucking helpful because I spend a lot of time trying to inch and inch closer to the 10,000 point. Here we go, almost there. Um, it's it's lagging because I'm, I'm also recording this and I have all of these files open, so my computer's freaking out a little bit. I apologize for that, guys. It'll get better. We're almost there. And yeah, here we are. Okay, so now we're gonna copy all that. So we we have now copied line one, line two to line ten thousand. So this is nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine items from our Scuba database. So now we're gonna paste them into part one, and it's gonna lag a bit. Takes a while. Work with it. It's it's moving ten thousand things, you know. Um, so after this does a thing, then we're going to save the file so it reflects the changes. So at this point, right now it's just part one because it's the shell that part one is going to go into. But soon it's going to be renamed to part one raw. And so what this means is this is the raw SkuGrid file and it hasn't had the, it hasn't had the compare done to remove the items that are no longer for sale on eBay. And it looks like I might, 10,000 might be too much, or I might have too much other stuff going on in the computer right now. Seems quite overwhelmed. Well, we'll see what happens. But so at this point, you guys have a decent understanding of what's going on. Um, I'm not gonna drone on too much on this video just because compare CSV stuff is notoriously boring. 
<laughs> and it tends to make really long, not so fun videos. So I tried to be pretty quick and efficient with this one so you guys have a sense of what it is and how to go about doing it. This isn't a tutorial. Obviously, you need to have more information. I haven't shown you how to get the files in the first place. My goal is to show you this is a thing that you can do. As long as you understand that and you have a little bit of an understanding about the specifics, then I'm happy. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.